I, I, we met a couple years ago. Erica, this is your first Vancouver Fan Expo, correct? Yes, it is. I live here, but this is the first time I've been here, so I'm very excited. I feel like it was last year I saw you. I know. However, because COVID kind of made a year disappear, didn't it? Oh, yeah. I feel like it did. Yeah. Amen, right? No, I'm <laughs> sorry. But yeah, I felt like I saw you not long ago. <laughs> That's what COVID did to us. Yeah. Uh, okay, let's talk about uh, Smallville. We'll talk a little bit about uh, some uh, current projects that you have going as well. Uh, I'm sure you get asked this a lot, but uh, you know, if you will indulge the Fan Expo audience here, because we always love hearing about chemistry, how people form those, those bonds and things like that. So when you were first cast as Clark and Lois, respectively, and we'll get into like such what big roles, what shoes, big shoes those were to fill. How did you first- Four big shoes, I noticed. The first time I saw you on set, I'm like, those are big shoes. Huge! She has huge. Like... Had, you, had you worked together or known each other prior to the show? No. no. By the way, I had zero input, thank you very much, on her casting. Yeah, that's not true. I had zero. They were like, I you need to come that... back two days early to meet this girl that we cast as Lois Lane. And I was like, I'm not coming back early. And they forced me to. And then I met Erica and I'm like, oh, this is gonna be good. So I went back up there after getting the role and they're like, we're just gonna do some tests and some pictures and meet Tom, it'll be no big deal. But I didn't know that if he really hated me after meeting me, I wouldn't get the job. Nobody Did told you me know that. that. No, nobody <laughs> told me that. Truth. No, nobody told me that. They said, it, so we're gonna introduce you to someone and if you hate her, let us know. No one told me that. Yeah, that was the, that was the way. That, that was in... That was in my head, it was not. Because they <laughs> if told Tom me that. Hates me, <laughs> But I mean, there's an added pressure to playing Lois and Clark uh, in terms of the, the iconic status of the couple. Like, how did you approach that differently in terms of a standard, like, love interest or something like well, that? Well, if I may. Please, I thought I was talking the whole was, time, but God, less, he's taken over. There was less pressure because we were playing these characters before they were established. And I felt that already with Clark because I was playing Clark Kent, you know, Hi, my name is Clark Kent, you're in Smallville, as I ripped the door off and the whole thing in the pilot, is we were establishing in our own version. So the pressure is less in that respect. I mean, the pressure to perform is always there. But like, I just felt like Clark was meeting Lois for the first time and had no idea who this very high energy, uh, <laughs> like wonderful person is and who he couldn't he take his eyes off. That. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Like, who is this? She won't stop right. talking right. ever <laughs> at all. See? <laughs> and when did things start to click for you two and you knew that you had some, some magic there, some chemistry that took you through yeah. the 10 seasons? It was fun. Was it, was it kind when of a did it, when we slow had burn? To do our scenes, he says, when did it click for us? And I went, when we had to start working? <laughs> <laughs> when they said action? <laughs> action. And we right. started uh, acting like we got along? <laughs> But yeah. you know, I, I kind of got on this already speeding, very successful machine, like, right? I came in in season four, so there was a different- The train was already- The train had yeah. left the station and I was just running to catch up. And so as, I had- As a, was Lois. As was Lois, so it worked out. But it's yeah, it, it really did, it, it took the pressure off because I kept telling myself that thing, right? Like he hasn't actually in any of the other stories ever met Lois at this point. So right. I'm good. I'm going to throw a bunch of stuff at the wall and whatever sticks will work or not yep. work. And, you know, the creators were really good about that too. You know, they would talk and go, this is how we want to form it. This is what we want. But, you know, you get a lot of information from the scene that, that they give you. You know what I mean? It's, it's. It was well written. Yeah. It's informative written show. Yeah. yeah. Talk no, to me about because oh sorry go ahead. Oh just we we just got along. I mean I I I would you know I was there. And I don't mean like feel sorry for me, but like I was there all the time. And the thing that I loved is working with the different actors throughout the day or throughout the week. And Erica always came in with like so much energy <laughs> that I just like fed off it. But that tr that also is like what Clark would have done. He would have fed off her energy in that part of the relationship. So. It was like meeting where you needed to be for both characters in a way. Kind of helps establish the, the character as you're playing it. I wish I would have said that, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Do you know what I think also worked really well is that we, view, that we had similar ways of viewing work. So I, for example, um, really loved the technical side. I was still quite new. 
um, but I wanted to know how everything worked. And I only felt comfortable if I knew exactly what the shot was, what they were gonna do, where they were gonna come from, blah, 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 blah. So like that was going through my head all the time, but you had made yourself very aware of the technical to help you. Yeah. So we got a lot of I remember repartee because you'd be like, wait. They would come in and happen. they'd be like, we're doing this, 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 this. And then you would turn your back to everybody and you'd look at me and go, what'd they say? <laughs> and I said, you're gonna turn around, you're gonna walk over there, turn around, and then on your second line, you're gonna turn around, blah, 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 and you're like, got it. And you would do it. I just oh, wanted just... to know, because I couldn't relax yep. at all about the acting at all, at all, at all. See, this is a little bit of, basically, there you, there's your behind the scenes. Yeah. There's a little Clark and Lois <laughs> right there for you. By the way, he makes it where's your simple. dad? Oh yeah, dad, where are you? Dad is here. I Hi hope now. we only see one hand. My dad and my stepmom are here. Where is he? Is he standing? He's so modest. Stand up, Dad. Woo! Where is my dad? <laughs> Sir, we wouldn't be here without you. Is that your dad? You sure? There's a lot of lights. It is dark. Are you sure? sure, Dad. How about that guy standing up? Is that your dad? No, no, no. Sit down. <laughs> Um, let's, oh I want to expand on the, the almost um, blank slate that you brought to the characters, uh, which I love Thank that you. notion of, of Thank sort, you. Very yeah, blank. Like, starting <laughs> over. Blank. Blank. And when Very we go just... back, we go back and look at the on-screen uh, couples that, that portray these characters. You know, you've got Christopher and Margot, and we've got Dean and Terry, and uh, Henry and Amy. So what, in terms of your... Amy was on Smallville. <laughs> it's true. She was. Oh yeah, uh -huh. that's right. I remember being like, God damn, this is like, this girl's a really good actress. I had, I forgot Next about that. Next thing you know, she's working with Leonardo DiCaprio, and I was like, I was right. That's right. Catch me if you I can. Was right. So, in terms of the legacy that you two brought to it, how do you? What stands apart? What's your signature? You know, sort of uh, aspects of the couple that that was that set you apart from the different ones. I think that's something somebody else should answer well, besides I, the two I mean, ones. probably. <laughs> Let but me overthink I, this. I think it's kind of going back, like we were in, you know, we were unencumbered by previous. We were, so you weren't comparing other no. couples' performances. Like all. I don't know, like for you, if you. If you had been cast in the Superman movie to be Lois Lane, I'm sure, I, I'm guessing, not to put words in your mouth, but I am. Go ahead. That would be a completely different, like, yeah. like how do I, but like for us, when our characters met, we were just like, hi. Yeah. Let's see what happens. So. I think you kind of have, well, it depends on who you are. I, I know there's a lot of actors that, that can say, okay, I, I, I took from this particular performance before or this one. Um, which we all do in a which sense, we, right. which we do, but I think if you own it too much, like for me, if I were to have tried to emulate somebody too much verbatim, I would have, I would have, it would have been too hard for me. So yeah. it was much better to go, keep it simple, like with Tom, what's my shot? What do I have to do right now? <laughs> right? So it's same thing with the creators. Yeah. What is in my scene? And then, you know, what is in this episode? What are we wanting from these two people? So with all due respect to the mythology, at some point I was like, this is my character doing this thing and this is what's required of me. Because yeah. I know for myself that would have just spun me right out and then I would have been locked in. It would have been able to be fresh or new and because you can't be anybody else anyway, even if you, you tried can't. your tried your best. Even if you try, you can't. I think that fresh approach. You're that kids? You're that kid. You're that kid? You yeah. be your authentic <laughs> self. That's been a theme actually through a couple of these panels, I have to be honest. It's, we've gotten pretty deep. Yeah. Yeah. But I think that uh, that shows the legacy of the show, yeah, you know, yeah, like, yeah. It, like mm. no, no. that fresh approach, I think, is really what, what made it stand apart. I mean, that's I think that's what made Smallville stand apart. Yeah. I mean, look at like, I don't know if you guys ever heard of Michael Rosenbaum. He played Lex Luthor. But yeah. Same thing. I mean, he like the, what a daunting task to play that character with Gene Hackman and all these people having gone before you. But he the same way was like. Well, I'm not them. This is a fresh thing. Who knows? And, you know, for Kristen, you know, Lana was very just really not represented at all. And then the way she was represented wasn't really the best. But you can, you can talk a, to her about that as it well. It was a different time. Well, I mean, she just, you know, I, I think she, the idea that she didn't really have her own trajectory. Mm -hmm. Right. I, 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 it's valid. But it was a story about Clark Kent. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's called Smallville because it's all about one person, which makes no sense. <laughs> um. Well, you know what I'll say, say to that is, is that, for example, people were, have come up over the years and said, 
oh, your character is so good and Lois is really good and all those kinds of things. And that's, that's, that's true, but I lucked into a character that was allowed to have a broad spectrum yeah. of emotion. And sometimes your, your job in a show, so Kristen's job when she came in was to serve that specific role and they kept it very narrow. So it's um, like, where I could come in and in one, one episode I'd be fighting, the next one I'd be, I could play the femme fatale, right. the next one I could yell at your character, where she just had to fit she, that. Yeah, she, you know? she, she block, the, you know, it's like a football player, like I need just, this is what you do on this play. You just do this over and <laughs> yeah. over and over and over. Yeah, I know so she was, yeah, yeah. I wish she was on this panel. Does she live in Vancouver now? She's, I don't know. She's in Toronto right now. We'll Google oh, it. Oh, good answer. Because if she was in Vancouver. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're, think, we're thinking about she's her. Not in, she's, They're she's in Toronto. They talk all the we time texted. Right. Where's your dad? Living here. <laughs> Change the subject. All right, let's give uh, the people the opportunity to ask some questions. So I'll just ask if you can line up in an orderly fashion to uh, one of the two mics there in the aisles. Keep the masks on if you can, because safety first. Can we keep it short as well, please? Yeah, keep it to one question no. if you can. <laughs> we will try to keep it short as Before well. Before we get to the questions, Erica, I just want to touch on uh, how you wanted, you, were really, uh, you wanted to delve into all facets of, of the production. Have you dabbled in directing or any other roles like I, that? A little bit. Okay. And I'm still looking to do more I of think that, more than a little bit. You're a legitimate yeah. director. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> you made Not it. Not a little bit. You are a director. <laughs> no, that's, that's cool. I'm just interested that's in where, where you That's also classic that. us relationship. I'll just kind of avoid and not really talk about it. You'd be like, oh. could you just keep it simple? You're a director. <laughs> and an actor. Yeah. Did so you? I did that on um, Saving Hope when I was working on that. And awesome. I very much enjoy it. I'm, okay, cool. Yeah. All right, let's take some questions. We'll start over here. Go ahead. Uh, hi there. Is this on? You, um, can, you can move the mic oh, over yeah, if yeah. you want to <laughs> reposition it there. Yeah, perfect. Thank um, you. He's over there. I can't. Uh -huh. um, yeah, we apologize if we can't see yeah. uh, specifics. It's really dark I from up there. I apologize if I can't see you. <laughs> but go ahead. So, um, what's one thing, and this is for both of you, uh, what's one thing from your time on Smallville that's kind of carried you over to your future, to your careers now? Like, what have you learned that's kind of been, been hmm. good for you? Um, don't second guess yourself. Just go for it, because you can always do another one. I actually got that from you. Huh? There you go. Words actually, you know, there is one because I was always thinking it was going to be wrong and it was going to be wrong and I couldn't waste anybody's time. But at the end of the day, you, you just throw something out there. Obviously, if it's way outside the box, maybe don't make that choice. But if it's like, yeah, I mean, you, you just in, go in, for it. In follow your gut. Yeah. On Smallville, you had a, you, you know, you were going to do three or four takes most likely anyway. Because there's there's so many things that can go wrong that it usually takes three or four takes, anyway. Like even if the actor is perfect every take, the camera is perfect. There's always something. So it's, you have three or four. So it's like, you know, you you kind of explore a little bit. You gotta have fun, and then you go to a movie, and they're like, "All right, that's it." And you're like, "Whoa, whoa! I just said one take. I thought I'd get three more." And they're like, yeah. "Why would you think that? You're not on your TV show anymore. So just let <laughs> it go." Like, oh. Interesting. Okay. Cool. Um, I I have a I think when I was on Smallville, and I, and I told this to some people today at the table because I'm coming back to Vancouver and everything, my appreciation for the experience continues to grow because I didn't have it at the time. I was just too busy and too exhausted, and I was just trying to get it done. But over time, I just appreciate it more and more. The relationships, the people we worked with, the fact that we get to be here and talk to you guys, that was not like in my realm at the time. It was, And so I think to appreciate what you're doing. Like I see some of these younger kids like who are on like Lois and Clark and, all, and they're so happy and they're so, and I was like, God, good for you. <laughs> I was not fucking happy at all. It was a horrible relationship. I was like busy. I was like tired. Anyway, don't, really nice. don't tell anybody <laughs> that. He was unhappy. Follow your know. dream, kids. But it's so like, I think I've learned to appreciate yeah. that's what I take from it. Yeah. Awesome. That's great. Cool. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Great, great insight. We're getting some great Don't questions. Don't tell anybody today. I said that, you guys. <laughs> okay? Thank you. Okay, on this side, go ahead. Hey, uh, I, I guess I got a fun fact and a question that follows that. Let's just do the funny fact. Okay, sure. When I, when, um, actually, when I was four years old, I was on Smallville as uh, Baby you Clark Flash? Kent. Were you I the was, Flash? No, I was, I was Baby Clark Kent. I was four years old. Shut up. You were the yeah. kid that they, in the pilot? Yeah. Woo! 
way. Did they pay you every time they ran that clip? Uh, no. Uh. <laughs> to pay my parents or something, I don't know. Dude, but, look at you. Yeah. So, I don't know if we ever actually properly wow. met them, so that's the, we can do it now. <laughs> you were so cute back then. <laughs> yeah, I guess I was going to ask, what was your favorite like memories from back then? My favorite thing was when they took baby Clark out of... <laughs> That kid was so cute. I remember being like, if I could only be that Everybody cute. Everybody loved that kid. If only I could be that cute. Yeah. You were awesome, dude. Thank you. You know what I loved about it is like you weren't like overacting at the time. Yeah, you know, I, uh... You were in the moment. You know, it's similar. I had nothing to compare it to, you know. That's, yeah. that's how yeah. it works. There was a purity to it. That's the earlier question. That's right. Yeah. Awesome. yeah. It's amazing. Yeah. Great. So what was Krypton like, by the way? Uh, really? Hot, I think. The hot? <laughs> That's so yeah. funny. Look at how long your hair is. I know. Oh. How old are you now? Uh, 23. I feel soon to be 24. That sounds about right. Do you feel old yeah. right now? Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm just Do you so feel proud old of at him. All? And he's, I, think, I can't tell, but I think he's dressed as Spider-Man. I am. Yeah. That's I'm fucked so, up. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Remember me, Cal El? Yeah, I'm fucking Spider-Man now. <laughs> My, I have a three-year-old son, he, he's all about Spider-Man. I, I don't get it, but I'm not trying to make him like Superman. I'm just saying, I don't, like, what's the deal with Spider-Man? What do you like about Spider-Man? Uh, to be honest, I like that this costume is sweatpants. Like, that's... <laughs> maybe that's, maybe my son likes that too, except he's <laughs> rarely wearing pants, but yeah. yeah. That's so funny. Well, nice to see you again. Nice to, yeah, nice to see you, yeah. <laughs> Did you watch the series? Oh, of course, yeah. Oh. Uh, I, yeah. I, oh, yeah, he I'll, asked I'll you what your them. favorite thing on Smuggle was. Well, I, I said. Yeah, yeah, oh, right. Okay. <laughs> Just give me two seconds. Dad. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank you so much. That's amazing. <laughs> Thanks for sharing. I, hold on. I will say real quickly, though, the opening sequence for Smallville and that theme song, badass. I had nothing to do with it, but, like, if somebody plays it right now, ding, 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 somebody, it's awesome when I don't do it. But it's good. good. It is good. That's my favorite part. Let's take a question over here. Go ahead. Fantastic. Oh, he's, he, I'm so proud of him. So can I just say that I've been a fan since I was like eight years old, and when you didn't get casted for Man of Steel, I definitely cried. Uh, <laughs> well, here's the quick answer. They would have had to have put Smallville on pause for two years, and they were already like $750 million invested in the show, and they weren't going to do that. They weren't going to let me like go do a movie. <laughs> Unsu no. But that's the reason. Yeah. Okay. Um, but thank you. Yeah. <laughs> what was uh, your favorite place to film in BC, both of you? I love the Ken Farm. Yeah? I mean, there was, there's so many places, but the Ken Farm did have like a, like we were in Alder Grove and we were in Burnaby. Pretty out there. Yeah, I loved locations. Um, we had stages in Burnaby. In the last couple of years, I like when they did the back lot where they actually built an outside. Yeah. They built a street for us Across outside. Crossing the Tim Hortons. That was convenient. Sure what was. about LexCorp? Was that your favorite? Late night, Tim Hortons? No, I, we hated LexCorp. It smelled like shit. Because yeah. <laughs> it was a shit factory. It would be and, like, we're going to the poo factory tomorrow. Yeah, and nobody hated it more than Rosebaum. He's like, I'm a super villain! <laughs> smells like shit! Everywhere I go! <laughs> but remember, he'd be yelling that on his anti-gravity chair while he was waiting to shoot. I hate it here! Yeah. He hated his life. So did Lex. Um, no, going on, that's the beautiful thing about Vancouver and to shoot here is you have so many locations within 45 minutes. You could be anywhere in the world in 45 minutes. And that's why so many productions work up here. It's really great. But to me, stunt days and location days were the best. Um, just because they're fun, exciting, and new and fresh. You didn't have to talk too much on those days. Either. And I didn't have to talk. <laughs> right. Good, good observation. Usually so on those remember days, there was, a, there was an episode where we had one specifically, I remember, you had to talk a lot and I wasn't allowed to talk and it was such a challenging scene for us. Because oh. I was like, oh, I don't like sitting and listening and reacting. Drive the scene, drive the scene. Yeah. And you were like, oh, I crap, hate talking. too many words. I know. There you go. <laughs> That's true. Well, thanks for being here, guys. Uh, thank thanks. you. Yeah, thanks for the question. Okay, uh, we'll take one from over on this side. Hi. Um, I'm trying to make it as an actor myself. I was just wondering if you had any tips. 
Well, you might want to start speaking up. <laughs> it's late in the day for him. He's getting tired. So, I, I lost you at actress. Nervous. No, I'm kidding. So, so you're trying to make it an actress and? And I was wondering if you had any tips. I could do it. You could? Yeah. I could barely hear that one. Tips for aspiring actors. Well, get hearing aids, I guess. <laughs> tips for an aspiring actor. Oh. Well, Erica has, here's the cool thing about Erica, she, she was in casting, actress, now director, all the same. So you've, I've been through all those processes, but you, you really work through those processes. So I mean, what would you tell someone coming in, not to put you on the spot? Well, I think it has to be something you really, really, really love um, to keep pursuing it, like really, really interested in it. So for me, I could do my day jobs, but then I would go, okay, how am I gonna get in a set? And I'm from Alberta, I have nobody in the business or anything, like I couldn't use a, a launching pad of some kind of nepotism or whatever, and so I just said, okay, what's the way to get on a set? And I just went and asked, and they said, be a background player. And so for me, yeah, I think there's a bit of a lottery and you can kind of win it and get into bigger roles that you can use to launch yourself elsewhere. But it, it was the drive, the love of it that kept me doing those things. So going and doing background all the time and not really caring about whether I was in front of the camera. I just wanted to watch the set and I wanted to watch whatever it was doing. Then I wanted to figure out this. So I'm, I was really curious about the whole thing. And then I just had this never ending desire to keep auditioning. Um, and I don't know if that's just a kind of a masochistic kind of thing, right? Because you have to put your, <laughs> you have to put yourself into a realistic space that says, you know, you cannot control any of that kind of stuff. You're going to audition for lots of stuff, and you can't control anything except for that experience, what you did, when you went in there at that moment. So if you love acting, you keep pursuing it because you can't not do it, right? But if you're going, okay, this is going to be my goal, and if I don't get this, I won't like it, um, then you'll have a tough go. So I tended to be like the person that was really excited to do any little piece of things. And then when I ended up being on Smallville, maybe that's part of the reason I was like super hyper all the time. But I, my expectations were, wow, okay, now I get to do this today, or now I get to do that today. So everything was really fun for me because I loved it. So I just kept going. And, and, and I, I agree with all of that. Yeah. And I would also say, like Sidney Poitier said, know your lines, be, or be on time, know your lines and hang up your wardrobe. Oh, that's true. Um, those are certain that's things. Like better. you really be as prepared as possible so you can let it all go in the moment. But I do agree, it's a it's a it's a it's a it's an unfriendly road, even if you get successful. You get more no's than yeses, if that's your perspective. But if you can learn from your no's, then not your nose, but your <laughs> your nose. <laughs> That's, you know, you gotta, you, you gotta have a thick skin though. Yeah. I mean, and it's not easy. It's a gypsy lifestyle for sure, of uncertainty, and based on other people's judgment. So, uh, but just be, as, be more prepared than anybody else. Yeah. That's the best armor you can have. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Okay, we'll take one over here for Tom and Erica. Hi, Erica. Hi, Tom. Hi. My name is Roberta. And uh, first of all, I would like to say I and my my husband Stephen, we love Smallville and Where's you Steven? guys. <laughs> Is cool. he here? Yeah. Hi, Stephen. <laughs> yeah, we are we, we are kind of fun that we do picnic in front of the Kent Farms, you know. Oh really? <laughs> really? Yeah. And uh, was it still smell like no, cows? No, no, not any problem. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and. Uh, we miss uh, new episodes uh, in Smallville, and I wish to know if have any kind of chance of uh, we have come, uh, the show come back and uh, have episodes about uh, after the wedding. Well, the there's inside, inside Smallville, you know? A, there's a slight version that Michael Rosenbaum and I and the creators of Smallville, Al Miles, are working yeah. on. Is They're, they're going to be writers, and Michael and I are going to produce it. But we're, we're working on an animated series that picks up right after our Smallville. And, and again, telling our own story. And our vision is that we get Erica. It might be tough to get Allison. Uh, but, but, well, you know, 
Kristen. We have Zoom. But we have Zoom. But Too we soon? like even Sam Jones and, and, and Lionel Luther is gonna be a big part of that and, and John Glover wants to do it. We've already been into this. We've already got animation. We just don't have the stories yet because Al Miles are like busy making like Tim Burton movies and stuff. But as soon as they're done with that, <laughs> we're gonna do this. But I like I want, you know, I want to be Clark's voice. I want Erica to be Lois's. Like that's gonna be the fun of it. And so that, that'll be good can you, I really don't think they're like on camera, aside from the crossover that we did. I don't, I mean, you really want to see Michael Rosenbaum as Lex right now? <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, there's a thing called Twitter. Start talking about it. Yeah. No, but um, I, I think there's a, there's a story that Alan Miles are gonna tell that's individual and new, and call it a multiverse thing. But let's, let's see where it goes. Uh, I think it'll be fun, so, yeah. Okay, thank you. Very exciting, thank you. All right, we'll take one from over on this side. First off, hi. Hi, Spidey. <laughs> yes, another Spider-Man. Uh, first off, uh, I have Were a you question. also young Clark? Okay, no, I wasn't. Okay, but, good. Okay, but, so I have two <laughs> Is things. Is that Tyler from Superman and Lois? <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, two things, just a question after, but I just wanna say, Thank you. Um, you know, I grew up with my childhood. Like, my I had three other brothers. You know, and my oldest brother, because my other brothers would always beat on me, and he would Wait, let. Wait, were both your brothers brothers? Yes. All right. Um, <laughs> so brothers would, would beat on you. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Continue. And um, when he would babysit us, I remember he would let me stay up late with him and watch Smallville, and I just made a lot of memories with him. So. And you're like, wow, this is great, we're Spider-Man. He's not beating yeah. on me for this hour it's, that we watch Smallville. It's, it's, just, it's just come in full circle. So it's like, oh. thank you for, you Don't know. Worry, turn around, it's a Spider-Man. Yeah. Thank and, you. And uh, a question is, how do you guys feel about like getting the call from CW to be on uh, Crisis? I loved it. I actually don't know what your experience was. Mine, very briefly, was there had been some talk about me showing up on some of the shows, and I was like, honestly, I was like, it's not the Clark, I just, you know, was like, no. And then when I, when they called me about the, this crossover thing, and they're like, listen, we know the answer's no, but just read it. And I read it, and I was like, fuck. This is actually pretty cool. Yeah. Like, if I was ever gonna come back, this is, the, this is awesome. Yeah. And, it just, I, I couldn't, I was like, if I was a fan, I am a fan, blah, blah, blah. And then if I do this, then no one's gonna ask me to come back ever again. <laughs> so that's fine too. And then when Erica got involved, even better. I mean, I think it would just, the idea of the multiverse, anything can happen, kind of like in life and whatnot. Um, but I just thought it was great to see a different version of what could have happened perhaps. I liked it, yeah. And that's not my Lex Luthor. You know what I mean? Yeah. That was the easiest line I've ever had to say. I mean, I love John Cryer. Like, I'm a big, I was like a big fan of his, like, growing up. I know, I got a little bit nervous. I got a little nervous. Yeah. And then he's like, I'm Lex Luthor. And I was like, hmm. No, no, no. That was the easiest line I've ever had to say in my life. Yeah. So that was fun. And then, you know, the way you came out and you're just like, oh, you little dope. <laughs> Let's go home. And I was like, eh. it was just fun it was like this, it was fun. to see a life outside the life yeah it was good perspective i think but i don't i mean i don't know well how did, they called you or i, I did what i what is known what i'm known for which is sometimes i think people are inside the movie in my head with me so i was shooting a movie and we were doing a camera kind of setup it was a delayed in between takes and of course as a professional i was checking my text messages and out of nowhere, like, Erica, can out you of be on your mark? And you're like, yeah, I am on my mark. And they're like, oh, sorry. You, you still haven't set up that light. And I was checking it. And then out of nowhere, I was like, yes! And I was super excited. Really? Yeah. And then I realized nobody else knew. Nobody else read what? that text. No. I just yelled in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> but I was stoked. so excited and, of course, did what I did on Smallville a lot. I didn't even read it. I was like, sign me up. They did it, a good job. It's gonna be fun. So I And I got to lucky. see Tyler, which was fun, because he's a good dude. That was fun. But it was it was cool to like Clark had no like my Clark had no idea who these people were, and that's it was written that way, which I think worked for me, selfishly. 
Yeah. There was part of me that it was, was like, oh, him, how are they going to do this? He didn't know but anybody still yeah. did it anyway. So. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for the <laughs> Thank for you. your time and, and the memories. Thanks, Thank Spidey. <laughs> okay, we'll go to this okay, side now. I'll answer faster so that we can go for Sorry, it. I'm talking. Sorry, I'm talking okay, go, go. too much. We'll try Bye. to get to everyone as as uh, rapid fire. We can rapid fire. I'll just say the first thing that comes to mind. Okay. Go ahead. Hi. Um, Hi. I was rapid fire. <laughs> <laughs> I was. Uh, I just had a couple of quick questions for both of you. Um, one was, what was your favorite moment on set? And the other was uh, for Tom. I was curious. What mm, method of portrayal uh, was your favorite in terms of Clark Kent? Like the, the good boy Clark Kent or the red kryptonite? Clark oh, Kent? It, red kryptonite was so much fun because it was so different. For sure. It's Easy. So my fav I, I think my favorite. That was just your feelings on Smallville. And you got to just like, yeah. you know, walk around. No, yeah. I'm just kidding. You're I was so like, nice to me. They're by like, the way. oh, sexy evil Clark. I'm like, well, I got the evil thing down. If he comes off as sexy, so be it. Yay. <laughs> but I, w I was playing more of the evil part, to be honest. And my favorite moment still to this day, like the first thing that comes to mind, is pulling that door off the truck in the pilot and just saying, you know, I'm Clark Kent and you're in Smallville. That's still my favorite because, like, it's just so cool. Like, I was like, I'm like James Bond, Indiana Jones at the same time. And they're like, no, you're Clark Kent. And I'm like, no, 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 I'm like Indiana Jones. <laughs> and, like. Luke Skywalker, and they're like, no, 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 but you're Clark Kent. I know, but it's like, <laughs> I had all these other references other than Superman and Clark Kent in my mind, and maybe that's why it worked, because I never thought I was either, if that makes, I was just a, I was on the hero's journey, if you guys have ever looked into that kind of stuff. Um, and that was fun, and maybe that's why it worked, because Clark didn't know who he was. Okay, and Erica, what, what was your favorite moment? Um, I would say like, my favorite moments, plural, were whenever there was a lot of technical stuff involved and everybody had to do something at the same time to make it work, whether it was a crane shot or um, a steady cam, and everybody had to be in part of it. It was like a really long shot. Don't fuck it up. I love that. I was so nervous all the time, and it was always me that screwed it up, but I was still so excited. And then I would have to say, like, yeah, those moments that kind of hang there that you remember was when I turned and said, I'm Lois, Lois Lane, and that was cool. There you go. I love that moment. Yeah. There's like a, a realization yeah. to it as an actor, perhaps, of. It was know, like super cool, and then you're be. like, ah, crap. Yeah. <laughs> Just for a second. <laughs> Thank you so much. I really loved you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. All right, on this side, go ahead. Hi, Erica. Uh, fortunately, I have to wear this. It's a program myself. I got sucker punch eight months ago, so. I'm so sorry. I can't hear anything you're uh, saying. Because there's also lots of talking. Yeah, about just so. if you can, speak up a little bit more with your question. Just, uh, I just say, uh, nice to see you there. And, uh, Erica, you look like Kate Middleton a little bit. Uh, that's future queen of England. Thank you. But the paint yeah. color, maybe. Royalty. Thank I mean, you. I'll take so that. I, I wish somebody that. would say that to me. Oh so <laughs> even you're shorter than a foot and a half, maybe. So my question to both of you is, uh, what you promoting right now? Uh, I, I'm not your small wheel fan. I did see the pilot once. Uh, I don't have the cable network uh, exilion of money. We are still fighting for the more affordable cable network, right? Okay. Maybe now with all the Skype and all the uh, WB and uh, Walt, uh, Walt, Walt Disney Channel. Okay, ABC. well. Yeah, so, so he's like, and he actually, I was going to ask this later, but what do you have uh, on the go right now in terms of a current project? Maybe you could talk about the Lifetime movie. That's right. The Girl in the Shed. The Girl in the Shed is coming out February 26th on Lifetime. I'm very uh, honored to have been a part of it. it what is, is she doing in the shed? Well. <laughs> Tune in. <laughs> it's not me. It's actually it's quite actually a harrowing a, story. Uh, it's, it's a bit of a harrowing story, actually. It's about it's, heroin? Yes. Dad? No. No, um, it is about, <laughs> you're going to feel bad. It's about the kidnapping of Abby Hernandez from 2013. Okay. So she was in a shed, and, uh, but not in any jokey kind of way. Anyway, let's move past that. The point is, I was, <laughs> when, <laughs> do you know when it's I'm coming just rambling. Out? February 26th. Yeah. Oh. And channel, it is a story about how soon. she managed to go through her experience and somehow find a way 
to um, connect with her kidnapper in such a manner that he actually um, let her go back home. Wow. And I played her mother in that. So I'm very excited yeah. for that. It's, it's, it's not light or comedic or anything like that, but it's a, it's a wonderful story. Wow, cool. Yeah. Okay, thank you so much. And we'll take a question over here now. Go ahead. Hi, guys. Uh, thanks very much for coming out. I'm a bit older than everyone else, so I didn't grow up with you guys. I was at the tail end of growing up, so I was just starting university once came in, so this hit real different for me. <laughs> uh, so that said, um, as a show that predated the CW shows and predated the CW period, uh, what would you guys take credit for as setting the mark for the future of projects that have come up since? Smallville. Yeah. Wait, what's the, what's the future mark for success? Like, kind of comparing the current shows that are on right now. Oh, well, they're all compared to us. Yeah, I mean, it's true. It's true, like Arrow, Flash. I mean, I know these guys. I know the, the crews and the people who work on them. Smallville was... I mean, I, I, I mean this in a humble way, but like Smallville really came out and set a standard that I think if that's the measure, at least for right now, unless I'm completely out of touch, that people were trying to meet as far as success and, and uh, visual effects and story and character. And they realized that people really want to see these origin stories. And yeah. so they saw that, you know, yeah. it came out, it worked, people loved it. Well, let's let's do the origin story of this character and this character and this character, and so I think yeah. it kind of flowed from there. And then who knows what the next thing is going to be, but that's yep. for sure. It really established that prequel culture that we know so well yeah. now. That's so that's yeah. permeated into into pop culture. Yeah, we've got the five minute rap sign. Oh. So unfortunately, we're going to have one more question, and we'll take I it hope on that side. The question. Uh, before that, though, uh, Tom, just quickly, can you talk about professionals? That's uh, one of your latest projects. Yeah, so we did it. We, you know. I don't know if any of you guys have seen it. It was, so we, we finished it like just before COVID, but it's been released in Europe because it was like uh, 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 finance all over Europe and whatnot. But the North American distribution rights have been bought and hopefully it'll be released here. You can probably find it on the internet here and there, but it was me and Brendan Fraser. We had a great time. Uh, there's 10 episodes at least that I know that I was in, <laughs> which I'm pretty sure that's all they did. And who knows if there'll be more, but then I'm, I'm going to Rome in April, I'm gonna go shoot a, yeah, nice to see you too. That, the, that was like a scary person. Um, but then I'm gonna do an action movie in Rome in April and hopefully that'll be out soon after that. So we're up to some stuff, we're trying, you know, things are getting back to some version of yeah. a new normal, yeah. Okay, awesome, so we look forward to that. And final question uh, for Tom and Erica over on this side. Just wanted to say thank you. Uh, my ex-girlfriend made me watch binge watch all 10 uh, seasons. Are you thinking, her? wait, are you yeah. thinking us or her? Thank are you still with her? Uh, she's my wife now. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. You, so you call your wife your ex-girlfriend? That's awesome. Just <laughs> keeping it fresh. This is my ex-girlfriend. Your ex-girlfriend? Uh-huh. My wife. I'm going to steal that. Just, I'm going to steal that. Wanna thank you both. I can't wait to call my wife to be like, you know, is my ex-girlfriend there? Yeah. My ex-fiance? <laughs> Good one, dog. Did she tell you to say that? No, she's she's probably embarrassed as I'll get out. <laughs> but uh, but no, thanks for after coming back from the beginning of the war when I came home, I didn't watch TV for a long time, and and watching your show, I just just thank you both for bringing that joy of heroes. Oh, back well, thank you, thank you, thank you for protecting us. This is an actual, it's a real hero. We just pretend to be. Thank you, sir. Is your ex is your ex girlfriend here? <laughs> Is this the first time he's said that? So does he introduce you that way? That's amazing. I love it. They're front and center, too. That's great. I love it. All right, people, let's give I it up for Tom. One thing. That's oh, awesome. I just want to say that, I saw that. a little fellow in the lineup with a red hat and a white front. Oh, yeah, over there? Yeah. He didn't Spider get to Man? ask his question. Oh, that little dude? He, yeah. Sitting next to your dad? <laughs> yeah. Okay, we'll let, Sorry, uh, guys, we'll let the little the gentleman have a, have a... And then I'm, I'm going to be at the table over there, so if people want to come and talk yeah. to me, you know. Okay, go, go ahead. One, one last bonus question. Ahead, Lois? Yes. Can you please say I'm an army brat? Can what? Can you please say I'm an army brat? I'm an army brat. I'm an army brat. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> Tom Welling, Erica Durant, put your hands together.